Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back another video from Tolino Mark, continuing with his One Piece reviews. We're checking out the second half of Dress Rosa. Absolutely epic stuff happens within this. Oh my god, Do Flamingo. Oh, crazy stuff. And uh, we get a new transformation from Luffy in this half, I do believe. And I'm just about to finish the zoo arc personally as well, so I'll be able to check out the zoo arc next week. And then, today, I'm picking up volumes 83 to 90 so I'll be able to finish the whole cake island I do believe this week so then yes we're carrying on so but until then let's check out what Mark thought of the second half of the Dress Rosa arc in One Piece I have finally finished Dress Rosa Whoa. what an amazing ride it's incredible what it was held largely by a number of factors stemming from both Fishman Island and Punk Hazard. yeah it did build it up it's safe for me to say that Dress Rosa will go down as one of the most ambitious arcs yet explored it does a lot by itself though universe. yeah Ho ho ho! Oh. Oh yeah, Kaido at the end as well, isn't it? It is Kaido, isn't it? The Sabo reveal. <laughs> His backstory. Ah, he's cool. Ugh. Let's find out. Yay. Okay. <laughs> it's a lot. It's a lot. This is that's definitely gonna come back. That whole like straw hat alliance thing that they all come up with. Of course, because they're so epic. Who doesn't want to watch a decent fight? He's so good at it. So good at it. Nolan, yeah. And I found out this quote from Skypia made 11 years before the Tantatas were even introduced. That's sick. I sat back in my chair in utter amazement. The level of patience it takes for a writer to delay gratification for that long. Must be so hard to, like, not jump to that. So, so worth it, as the feeling it gave me as a reader, having only covered the material of Skypia a few months prior, was intense. So I can only imagine that's sick. what sort of euphoric I... and dwarf ah. rush a decade-delayed reveal like that would have been for some of you out there who have been reading for that long. That on its own is crazy to think about from a world building point of view, but would you believe that there's a much more significant or crucial plot point in this arc that's foreshadowed in the most subtle way I've ever experienced in a story? So come with me on a journey. Right, go on, where are you going with us? Back to the events immediately following Marine Fort. Luffy's going through some stuff. And yes. The in disarray as the Navy are just after coming away with a victory, having defeated and killed both Fire Fist Ace and White Beard in this yeah. battle. Because the Celestial Dragon, yeah. Fast forward a few hundred chapters and boom. Sabo. Sabo was revealed to still be alive, leading to the most wholesome reaction from Luffy I've seen yet. Yeah, it's so sick. But what's freaking amazing about this reveal during the Coliseum bout with Sabo is that it was foreshadowed. If you rewind back 100 chapters to the cover of chapter 668, in the lower corner of the panel are the three sake cups Luffy, Ace, Oh my and god! Shared. And we knew at that point Luffy had not done that and Ace definitely did. Wow. No, that's amazing detail. That's sick. 
excitement I had for the future of the series. From these two pieces of oh, I wish I noticed that. Over the last two days, I, I had Sabo spoiled for me though via my Funko Pop. Oh. such an avid and voracious reader base over the last two decades. And quite simply because Oda loves this world. He's a beast, man. That dragon style stuff he does. Yeah, I'm glad I'm on it now. <laughs> It's going to be incredible. You know it is. Like, the whole storytelling of One Piece is just like, ugh, incredible. Oh my god, God Usopp. Yeah, it's sick. That whole thing in his bounty becomes incredible. On top, yeah, definitely. God who shot man, yeah. Just something I want to quickly mention. There's a quick shot of like the CP guys, like the um, one with the mustache and that. Did he have Sugar King's mask on for that shot? Because I'm wondering if they're going to do something like that later. I might be wrong. It's just what like it. Mention that before it comes into it. Yes. Yeah, because he doesn't actually have one. It's Sugar King's bounty poster that's out there. <laughs> yeah, Usopp's so funny. I think for right now we should start hopping into the events surrounding the conclusion of this tale. And let me tell you, if the first half of the Dressrosa review was top to bottom exposition and world building, then the second one is wall to wall battles with the established Hell yeah, that constant run, 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 get to Doflamingo, get to Doflamingo. All the truth behind Doflamingo's heinous plans, and thus he has to cast the entire island into a giant cage. The bird cage, yeah. I think that's amazing. Yeah, man. That guy's backstory with his, like, is so, like, oh, bro, I'll tell you to my eye. We got some good character designs on the bad guys. Yes, and Super Android 17 was awful. <laughs> I like his conflicting, like, personality, that's cool. Terminator Frankie, jeez. Yeah, man. So that's what his voice sounds like, right. Because it does hint that he's got a really high-pitched voice that he hates people taking the piss out of. Hell yes, he did. And I found this battle to be great simply because it's super easy to understand why he poses a threat to Zoro and the others. Regenerating using the stone of his environment and also he's freaking huge. It's kind of like the same the obstacle as, um, is it Agent One? Who could just turn into swords and Zoro trying to break the unbreakable. And now he's just like, alright. <laughs> 
cause destruction of the brood in order to allow Robin, Rebecca, and Bartolomeo to fly away. To use him as a stepping stone shortcut to get to the top. And, of course, the climax of this battle. Pika making the grave mistake of turning his back on the swift sword. Don't ever do that. Him to utilize a brand new technique, giving him the time to figure out, on the fly, by the way, the perfect strategy for taking out an enemy that can regenerate. It's smart, it's epic, and it has a... He hides within the stone, doesn't he? Like the so it's like, slice it, slice it, find him. Awesome. Yeah, so he's using um, Haki within the blade, isn't he? Yeah, that's what he said. It's like, just manipulate the Haki within the sword that you're using. Yeah. I think that's why it's easy, though, isn't it? Everyone else is, yeah. Yeah, they do. As a quick aside, Law being grumpy towards Luffy because he can't do anything it's so funny. while Luffy carries him through treacherous passageways and perilous climbs was something I never knew I needed in my life. Yeah, it's but you do. It's great. So good. So good. Story, He's one of the seven warlords of the sea. <laughs> He's got one heck of a title. And he's just being carried around. He's cool. Hell yes. It, it looks like, um, like, Kumba, like, when he's not on steds. <laughs> you know, from Super Dragon Ball Heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So every fight should have some sort of story to it. He really loves himself, doesn't he? Robin. Yep. Dangerous. Anyone. Yeah. Friend or foe. But thankfully, that isn't an issue for Robin to deal with, and through some clever tactics, with Bartolomeo and Cavendish seeing I die and ultimately switching battle strategies, Cavendish taking the defensive approach, carrying Robin to safety, and Bartolomeo taking on the offensive. It's a neat sequence. It's class that he can use his barrier as a little thing to hit him with. Senor Pink, of course, that's his name. The, super type stuff as the, and tone for each the two manliest men fighting it out like manly man. Senor Pink, a chubby, half-naked, middle-aged man. 
and socking on a pacifier, wearing sunglasses, styling a baby's bonnet. And the best part is, his demeanor, his fighting style, and his dialogue all contrast his appearance in such a stark way, I immediately fell in love with him. Fighting yeah, he's so interesting. It's like, he, he, those do not reflect his personality whatsoever. Yeah. More specifically with this battle, oh my god. Flashback of the origin of Senior Pink, so which sad. was significantly more tragic than I thought it was going to be, mm. demonstrating a much younger man falling in love with a woman named Lucienne, who in particular detests pirates. In an effort to not lose the love of his life, he manages to keep this reality hidden from her. He says he works at a bank. Yeah. Together they have a child, but unfortunately the child dies, and in trying to contact Pink, his wife finds out that he never worked at the bank. He comes clean about his piracy, causing her to run off. Later, he discovers that in her fleeing mm. fire, she falls victim to a massive landslide, leaving her in a vegetative state. To this date, Senor Pink still wears this ridiculous outfit because, while he was caring for his wife, this was the only way he could make her smile. smile. Yeah. I mean, no wonder he's so hard boiled, but also, yes. through these flashbacks, we learned that Senor Pink has been part of the Don Quixote family for well over a ten while. Years. Yeah. He glimpses at the unit that they were back then, showing us a person or two we might not yet have seen. Regardless, the battle ends in favor of Frankie, but not until Senor Pink gives him everything he's got. Both men yeah, he's like, come on, I'll take that last body slam. Another person has to offer. In the end, only Frankie was left standing. Usopp, the godlike sniper. Then, speaking of each fight in some shape or form... This was class. This one is connected more directly than any of the others, and what's funny is that this involves virtually no fighting, but it's still my favorite part of this section, simply because of the stakes it has and the means with which its events are carried out. You see, once Usopp finds out that Sugar, the person who scares him more than anyone else on the planet apparently, has reawakened, thanks to Viola's devil fruit that allows her to see anywhere around the island, she sees Sugar making a beeline for Luffy as they edge their way and it's like, no, to go gotta the stop her, gotta stop her now. Yeah. Which means they are doomed if Usopp, who is on the other side of the island, doesn't do something soon. And thus are the circumstances that set the scene for one of the single greatest Usopp No pressure or anything. <laughs> so here it goes. Usopp has to, while still injured and fatigued from the last battle he had, set up his mega slingshot. Hell yes. A telescope, as well as the guidance of Viola, to fire a projectile an island's length away with pinpoint precision. God. That needs to hit, mind you, through a window at a specific part of it. Did you get all that? Yeah. Me neither. Well, you know what? <laughs> Usopp freaking did. Yeah, he did. He nails Sugar, not with anything to cause her harm, but to again scare her into a comatose state using an imitation mock-up of his scary face using the devil fruit ability of the other samurai who was also found just now. It's all happening and super creative, but it wasn't enough. We so over the top. That Usopp finally is tapping into some hockey power of his own. Yes. Here we go. Ooh. Oh, what's his name? Hyena. What's his name? What's his actual name? Ends up having to fight for him. Arc, we were faked out a crazy 
crazy amount of times by way of Doflamingo's body doubles. Yeah, a bit annoying at times. This choice creates this feeling that Doflamingo is always composed and one step ahead of everyone. And when that composure shatters, he becomes the string tentacle monster tearing Dressrosa to shreds at the end. And oh yeah, when the birdcage starts contrast. roaring in. And I like that contrast and progression more so than most villains in any arc of One Piece. I love that his entire motivation for years was to work under the radar, but by the end of dealing with Luffy, he is as high profile bad guy as it gets. But in saying that, by the time the real Doflamingo came to dance, I had felt like I was seeing something I already saw. And thus the pacing for this particular fight felt dragged out more so than anything else in this arc. Not to say I didn't like it, I really did, but just slightly less than the rest. Some of my favorite hmm. include Luffy stopping Doflamingo. Oh my god, when he stopped his foot, that was incredible. Yeah, I didn't think it dragged on at all. I thought the pacing was absolutely spot on. I was constantly just turning, 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 like, oh my god. I mean, god, yeah, he strings himself back together inside, doesn't he? Yeah. He's got now, a lot going on there. <laughs> like this progression in Devil Fruit abilities, it shows that there's way more inventive ways of using a particular power. I just found it slightly more difficult to suspend my disbelief when dealing with Doflamingo swinging off the clouds in Dressrosa than I did with Crocodile's abilities in Alabasta. I realize it might sound like I'm knocking Doflamingo here, but I'm really not. I love the guy, and what he offered this arc was spectacular, specifically when this happened. I thought this choice was fantastic, and I adore this section for the same reasons I loved Alabasta. It required every relevant character to work together towards a greater goal. Just because Luffy is the main character... Right, so it's drawing it in. Right, it's like, you ain't got much time now. Need ...to work together, specifically in this crazy situation, which we again see the Straw Hats work together alongside Fujitora, who recognizes the madman Doflamingo... Yeah, it's like, this has to stop. <laughs> this has to stop. <laughs> Oh, of course, the lost backstory with Doflamingo's brother. And that division was largely due to a man called It's a sad story, but the main takeaway from it is that the Op Op Fruit's main most significant power is that it can grant someone immortality, which makes me wonder. If something like that has been proven, then there must be someone that has it. Ooh! That's an interesting theory. Because, yeah, how would they know? Whoa. Shame that they didn't touch on the backstory more because it also explains how that guy with the food on his face ended up being part of the story and why he knew about Doflamingo and that. He says the law, you know nothing of his past. Four. Yeah. This was really cool to watch unfold on the page before me. Specifically because you know this form hits super hard and you know that Doflamingo is really feeling it as he gets thrashed around by this hulking it bouncing. Kind of resembles the form he had in Thriller Bark a bit, doesn't it? I'm not a massive fan of how it looks, but outside of that, I do love how it shakes things up and changes the tension of the scene. Specifically when it leaves Luffy completely drained of energy and defenseless. In his ten minutes. Get him 10 minutes. The supporting cast to protect him, reinforcing that everyone in this arc serves their own purpose, and it's absolutely clear that a ton of care and effort went into establishing every single one of them. From the relationship and fights that Kiros and Rebecca partake in for each other, to the obsession both Cavendish and Bartolomeo share for Luffy, to the love and trust each and every one of the Straw Hats has for each other. Nothing in this arc goes to waste, and it's all explored and made use of in this closing scene specifically. Everyone working together to buy Luffy enough time to recover in order to deal the finishing blow. Unfortunately, as fate would have it, as Doflamingo rampages through the city, he manages to get a hold of Rebecca and Viola, no. her and trying to force her into killing her own sister. Thankfully, someone interjects. That's a big old no from me, String Boy. Visual and thematic components to the story of Dressrosa that share parallels and contrast well with. 
Similarly to Alabasta, we are aiding the princess of a particular region in an effort to save her kingdom from the main villain who wishes to gain control over it for his ulterior motives. We have a largely group-oriented battle requiring everyone to fight before all work mm -hmm. to and to buy Luffy as much time as possible. In addition to that, the significance of Luffy's role is brought about by some visual components also. In the case of Alabasta, it was the rain to signify the end of battle, and in this instance, it's the vanishing of the birdcage. I think this format works specifically well for Oda and the ensemble cast of characters. Yeah, there is some similarities there, isn't there? Hmm. <laughs> However, obviously, in saying that, there are plenty of aspects to this tale that make it unique into and of itself. Definitely. <laughs> Oh yeah, Blackbeard's member. Yeah, he just annihilates him. He starts trying to bring Ace up and he's like, no, not happening again. And we learn that he didn't have any memory until Ace was dead. I like that. Because otherwise it makes sense as to why he would join in the first place or if he knew about it yeah he's brutal mate yeah he's like no come on we're going Talking to the fairies and that, yeah. Allowing the straw hats to recruit, rolling the dice every day for such a thing to be allowed. But the most important action Fujitora takes during this entire section is seen at the very end of the battle when he Oh, yeah, he takes um, responsibility for it, doesn't he? And the heads of the government, world government, are like, what are you doing? <laughs> Yeah, because he's seen what they're like in the first place, and he was like, oh, in Alabaster, I wish I could have done that. So, as Luffy and the crew retreat to the docks while being pursued by Admiral Fujitora, something curious happens. A real sign of changed times and progression. Luffy flat out refuses to run any longer, and dukes it out with Fujitora, citing that things are different and aren't at all like they were in the past. He's now an extremely powerful pirate, and has no... But then everyone's like, no, we gotta go. <laughs> He has to come back at some point, don't he? He has to. Like, he even did those cover pages to show what he was doing on the moon. Mate, yeah, when they all start this alliance thing. He doesn't want it, does he? <laughs> I don't think that was brilliant. He's like, nah. Yeah, and then like build up um, friendships and that. Which is essentially 
character development did fast forward. And this was useful in the traditional sense during this arc when we were able to utilize characters like Cavendish and Bartolomeo as well as the rest of them in crucial scenarios that even carried some of the narrative tension and weight. But when I saw this scene, I realized that he used the tournament setting and this arc to set up and establish quite well, I might add, the foundations that make up the captains of Luffy's Armada. While reading through this story a few weeks back, I realized that there would, of course, come eventually a time in the not-so-distant future where Luffy would require such forces. Yeah, of course, he's going to need help at some point, isn't he? If he's going up against the Emperors at some point, he's going to... Uh... ...need to be established independently, and over the course of the series, Luffy would acquire them similar to how he did with the original Straw Hat Pirates. But instead, he completely surprises me by getting the entire thing in one instance, while also taking me completely by surprise. Imagine, if you will, being surprised by the natural inclusion of a 5,600-man strong armada, and I was blown away by how he pulled it off here. In essence, there's tons of fallout to this arc. Kids' alliances after setting their eyes on Shanks, the alliance Aokiji made with Blackbeard seems to have after fallen through, the rest of the Straw Hats are after arriving on some strange island, while Zoo. also being pursued by something, and most importantly, we finally get our first glimpse Kaido. of Kaido leaping from the Sky Island in an effort to kill himself, a ridiculously impossible feat, which makes him all the more imposing and impressive to see. And finally, all the Straw Hats now have new bounties. Luffy's has been oh, up to 500 million, Zoro finally got some respect on his new bounty at 320 million. The most oh, then there was that, um, what was that, the start, is that how the zoo arc starts, million, where, uh, the guy that claims to be Whitebeard's son who's just going around killing people, only alive, specifically requests that he be captured alive while the others which makes sense in the zoo arc. I'm not sure what this means, maybe he has an important extended family or something. Yep, he does, <laughs> he does. <laughs> I still don't know, but I, like, yeah. Oh, I call it zoo, because <laughs> the animals. <laughs> I know, it's Japanese for elephant. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, man, Dress Rogue is sick. I am loving it. Yes. Oh. Okay, <laughs> there's always something really randomly weird at the end. Um, yeah, Dress Rogue was sick. Uh, Doe Flamingo was cool. He's been captured, by the way. There's little things that I wish he would mention because, um, I don't know, it's like, because now it's interesting as well that Doe Flamingo wasn't killed, he's been captured, and he's been taken away. So it's like mystery of, ooh, Doe Flamingo's still around. So whatever was going on with him with whole Celestial Dragon um, connections and stuff and blah, blah, blah. Yes, but also Kaido's probably peed off that, like, his whole thing's been ruined now. Uh, so is he bothered about getting Doflamingo? Like, Caesar's still out there and all that stuff. So, um, although he's got a thing with um, Big Mom, hasn't he, that's mentioned in Nuzo. But anyway, um, yeah, there's still other stuff that's, that's going on. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm loving the Zoo, the zoo arc. Uh, started off a bit like, uh, but... Yeah, I'll talk about that next week. I really want to... Ah, I'm loving it. I thought it was a bit slow, and I'm like, oh. So, uh, be cool to see Totally Normax review of that next week. And, uh, yeah, thank you to my patrons. If you want to have your name at the end of every video I upload, link is in the description to the Patreon page. One dollar a month is all I have to help support the channel. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you very much, guys, for that. And thank you all for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, and leave comments down below. Let me know what I watch for future videos. I'll see you guys. All you guys, next time.